there's one. Ooh. He gave me a lot of time to get that one. Today I'm gonna talk a little bit about using soft plastics for walleye. I wouldn't say soft plastics are my favorite. I prefer bait, but there's a lot of reasons you might want to use soft plastics. It's a nice walleye. Got him. And that soft plastics are pretty durable. They don't expire like your live baits, like night crawlers and such are going to. And they allow you to really diversify the color that your presentation is because plastics come in, because soft plastics come in such a wide variety of colors. All right, there we go. First walleye of the day. Got him in the Fire Tiger Moon Eye Jig and a gold minnow and pyrite shiner. It's like a gold shiner minnow. All right, that's a good way to start the day. One fish in the boat. Go ahead and knock out his gills, knock him out. Let's go get another one while the bite is on. That's another advantage of plastics is, you know, when you get into these bite windows, you can really take advantage of these hot periods when the fish are on the feed and get your gear back down there and get to them. I fish plastics just like I fish bait though, just pretty much drifting in the current or drifting over some sort of target structure that I know holds walleye if I'm on a, a lake. And I generally find that, you know, a slower presentation is gonna be better. I'm not trying to go for these really big jigging motions. The difficulty with fishing plastics is that a lot of times they won't hold on as long as uh, if you have a big chunk of night crawler on there or if you're fishing live bait, like a minnow in the Midwest, if you're putting a chub on the end of the jig. You be, need to be a little, they need to be a little quicker on the reflexes in terms of uh, setting the hook. My first drift, I definitely missed a few bites. I think I've already missed one on this drift. I think I'm just out of the strike zone right now. Going. There's one. Nice. And that's why I really like the gulp minnows. They are a little softer uh, than some other plastic baits, which makes them a little less durable, but it does give you that little bit of extra time for it. Oh, he popped off. Are you kidding me? Dang it. That's a bummer. As I was saying before, the way I like to jig these is just very subtle little skips along the bottom. A lot of the prey, like crawfish and juvenile perch and sculpins, really scurry along the bottom a lot. They don't make big, quick movements. And so if you imitate their prey like that, to me it seems that's the way they prefer. A little soft down there like sand. You get hard to detect the bottom when the, it's just sand like that. You don't feel that hard tick. There he is. Just keep steady pressure on him, bring him up from that deep 87 feet. I'm getting a lot of soft bites, so I might switch up to something shorter on the plastics. That's gonna. Help me get less short strikes. I think they're grabbing the tail on those gulp minnows. There we go. Nice walleye. Perfect. But I do like these gulps. They give you the time to set the hook. They will hold on to them. Mark that spot. Excellent. See, he uh, really went for that thing. Slurped it right down tail first. 
Now one of the things I really like about the Gold product is of course it has scent built into it so um, you don't need to add any. And when I fish plastics I really prefer to put scent on. I think it does make a difference. I notice if I don't scent my plastics I don't tend to get nearly as many strikes. I think because these fish have time to really come up and look at it while you're drifting by them or just jigging over the top of them. Make sure you save those scents by sealing that bag up on that gulp. But if I'm going to fish something like, say, some yum curly tail grubs here that have no scent, I'm going to add some. Generally, for walleye, I'm going to use something sticky, so I'm, I'm going to stay away from the oils and things like that. And I'm going to go with either crawfish or anise. I really like this bumblebee pattern. Uh, walleye grubs from Yum. They're affordable and uh, just a good color combo for, for walleye. It's a lot shorter than the lure I was just using. So maybe I'll get a little bit less strikes, uh, short strikes on it. So after I get that on there, I'm going to put just a little bit of scent on there. And uh, we'll do a couple drifts with this, see if we get, get hit on it. And if we don't, then we'll switch up to something different or go back to the gulp. You can see that's a much smaller presentation overall. So hopefully I'll get a little bit less short strikes there. Grabbing the tail of that uh, gulp a lot. And the colors that I'm going to use are going to be the same that I prefer for most of my walleye fishing, which is yellow, chartreuse, green, black. You can even do some of the more natural colors, which maybe I'll try something more natural colored if I can get a fish or two on the curly tail. There's a fish. Oh, I missed. Dang it. Still getting them short strikes. Um, well, they will hit that curly tail grub. They're just really just tapping it. There he is. Got him. I knew I'd get one eventually. They kept smacking that thing. There we go. Got him. All right. Got one on the curly tail. Perfect. All right. There's one on that bumblebee. Yum. Moon eye jig. Nice. Cool. All right, let's go back through there and get another one. Try to get this guy bled, bonked. I think adding a little bit of fresh scent always helps too. Just gives you a little more time to set that hook. For some reason, this bumblebee grub tail has just always killed it for me out here. I'm gonna hit this thing back up with some more of my Atlas Mike's Lunker Lotion Crayfish. I like this one the best. It actually smells good to me. So hopefully it smells good to walleye. So I prefer to use medium power rods. This is a seven foot two medium power fast action rod. You want that fast action of graphite, um, not only to help you set the hook, but help you detect that bite. Uh, Cause you want that signal from the bite to transmit all the way up the rod. Notice I always have my finger on the blank so I can feel that tap. That's why I like rods that are designed with an exposed blank that your finger can rest on. Just helps you to detect that bite so much better. And then for my main line I'm running I think 10 pound Power Pro and 8 pound fluorocarbon leader. You want that really thin diameter braid again to help with detecting the bite but also a thinner line is going to have less blowback when you're jigging at extreme depths like I tend to. It may not be an issue for you depending on how deep you typically walleye fish. 
You also want to try and find a rod that's fairly light because you're going to be holding it up all day. You don't want something that's going to be overly cumbersome. And again, you can go with a little bit smaller reel because you're not piling on a ton of heavy, thick line. You're just putting a little bit thinner braid on there. There he is. Felt that. And then just slow and steady pressure, bringing them up. Pretty light drag. Nice fish. Beautiful walleye. Boom. Got him. Excellent. That's awesome. That's how it's done. All right, so this morning I've been showing you sort of the classic brightly colored walleye lures, but when I go home and clean these fish, I, the most common thing I find in their stomach, especially out here in the upper Columbia, is little sculpin. So I have this tube jig here that looks like a sculpin. And I think that's what tube jigs best imitate is little sculpin. So, so we're gonna try get this little sculpin down there. This is a half ounce tube jig. Uh, so we'll see if it gets down there. The one thing about tube jigs is they do tend to spiral a little bit more. So it's a little bit harder to get them down to the depths that I'm fishing today. But we'll give this a shot and see if we can get one on a more natural color uh, bait pattern. There are some days that this actually tends to do a little bit better than the brightly colored stuff. But in general, I think I do better overall with those really bright colors that are more typical for walleye fishing. See, it falls a lot slower than the uh, other jigs because it wants to sort of spiral around as it goes down to the bottom. It'll be also harder to feel the bottom because it has that plastic coating around all the lead, so there's not going to be metal contact with the bottom. We'll give it a drift or two, see if we can't make something happen on it. If not, we'll go back to the traditional grubs and uh, minnows. There's the bottom. There it is. Well, didn't take long to show that that worked. <laughs> First drift, like 10 feet into it, you got one on the tube jig. Definitely harder to detect the bottom though. Nice. Boom. Perfect. There we go. There's one on the tube jig. Oh boy, he's hooked in there good. Big hooks on these uh, tube jigs. There we go. Nice little eater. It doesn't take a walleye very long to get this size. So they don't really have a lot of time to accumulate many toxins in there body when they're young like that which makes them good clean healthy eating all right that was on the tube jig cool now if you're getting a lot of short strikes one thing i like to do is add a stinger and i like these little ones from northland tackle you see it's got that little red shrink tubing on the end of that stinger and then a stiff piece of monofilament and then on the end they got a hook there and so that allows you to pick up those fish that are short striking. So we're going to run this with a stinger down there and see if we get a fish or two on that stinger and see if it helps with those short strikes. There's fish. All right, we'll see if we got them on the uh, stinger or on the main hook. Oh, he took that old thing down. So. No risk of losing him. One thing I don't like about the stingers is 
just another hook to get tangled in the net. Which, of course, this one's already gotten tangled in the net. But there you can see he hit the main hook. The stinger didn't even get him. There he is. Got him. Oop. That one I did just get by the stinger hook. Oop. Got him. Just barely felt him pick it up. I think it just goes to show that plastics can be really effective in the diversity of colors and shapes and patterns. It's just all about getting that correct presentation. And you can put a limit of walleye in the boat in under three hours. That's my eighth fish of the day. So I'm gonna pack it in. This one I did not get on the stinger hook either. So a lot of people ask me about stinger hooks and on occasion I use them, but I really don't feel like they offer me much advantage. It's just more about getting the right equipment that lets you detect those bites so you can get a good quality hook set. Those fish are really good about sucking in the lure and taking the target, even these smaller fish. So that's gonna do it for me guys. I'll put links to all of the jigs and plastics that I mentioned in this video. And I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.